everyone, it's Paige and welcome back to my YouTube channel today. And we're going to work through iron. So I was looking through my shot scope data and I thought I was losing shots elsewhere. Maybe my driver, which sometimes I have some issues with or short game and putting, but it was actually my irons. I'm not hitting enough green, so I'm not giving myself enough opportunities to make birdies. And so when I look back at my rounds, I'm seeing lots of pars and some bad bogeys here and there because I'm putting myself in bad spots to get up and downs. And so it, right now, all of my scores that aren't quite where I want them to be are stemming from bad iron shots. And so I'm going to work my way through my bag and I'm going to take you along with me on how I do a iron focused range session with a couple of my favorite drills that really help me uh, get back in line with what I need to be doing and hitting better iron shots. So let's just get right into it. So before I get into my range session, I want to stress again the importance of checking data um, and keeping your stats. And so you can do it a ton of different ways. You can keep it on your scorecard, but it's really hard to keep all of your rounds together and you know find the averages and what's really going on in your game. And so I use my shot scope and I have all the data tracked, laid out there for me. And so I can check right away what's working, what's not, not working, what I need to focus on, what I need to get better on, improve on, um, you know, all of that stuff. And so it really helps me when I don't have a lot of time to practice because I'm so busy doing other things uh, within my business that I can really focus the time that I do have on exactly what I need to do to get better. And so right now it's iron, sometimes it could be short game, it could change all the time, but you can really focus in and have specific practice schedules when you go out to the range. So you could have 10 minutes, 20 minutes, two hours, whatever it may be, but you know when you're going to the range, you're working on something specific and you can get better so much faster that way. So I just grabbed my 48 and I'll start with either my 48 or my 54 and I'll just hit little chip shots. So I'm warming up my body and trying to find contact in the center of the face. And I always warm up this way. I hate going straight into a big swing. And so again, grab like a wedge, something you feel confident with and just hit small little shots and keep doing it until you find the center of the face. Don't move on until you consistently find the center of the face. And this is how I always warm up before I get into, um, whether it's technique before a round of golf, whatever it may be, this is always what you should do. Find the center of the face before you move on to bigger shots. After I feel good with those shorter shots, finding center in the face, I'm gonna move on to a bit of a fuller swing. It's going to be almost a full swing, but about 60% of my full speed. As soon as I start getting into a fuller swing, I grab my sticks and these are my alignment sticks. It is so important to practice with your alignment sticks. And so what I do is I put on my toe line and then I use this stick to kind of figure out where it needs to be. And the reason that this is important because when you are hitting ball after ball after ball and you're not going through your pre-shot routine, you can start switching your stance and you could be open, closed. You don't actually know exactly where you're going. So in the beginning when I'm working on certain types of drills, I will always use my alignment sticks. And when I'm going through my pre-shot routine at the end of my practice, which I will show you, you take the alignment sticks away. But if you are just not going through your pre-shot routine, but you want to be in a specific target every time, grab your sticks. So I put it down on my toe line. The target is the 100. It should be about this far away from your target. And I know when you're, you're looking back, you're like, how can that be just this much? But when you think about it, like parallel lines, it's going to be, if it's this far here, it's this far out there. And so again, I run the inside of this uh, edge of the stick on the inside of this part of it. And I should 
almost have this much on this side of it from where my target is. And that's how you line up your sticks. And it's the same for every target. It doesn't change when you have a longer club, shorter club, wherever your target may be. It's always the same uh, process of lining your sticks up. As you can see, I'm doing about a full swing, but like 50, 60%. And this is again, just to kind of like loosen my body up. I'm not really focusing on anything in particular right now. It's just to get loose with my swing. After I work through my 48 from the chipping to the full swing at 60% to more of a fuller swing, fuller speed, I then go to either a nine or eight iron. I wanna hit my eight today because I'm gonna start doing a couple more drills and I just want a bit of a longer club but not like a seven or a six yet. I don't wanna work into my long irons yet. And so I'm gonna grab my eight and what I struggle with and when my irons get a little squirrely is my takeaway. I get quick on my takeaway. And so this is my all time favorite drill that it will work for anyone. And what you do is you set up, put a ball right behind your club head and you have to brush the ball away. And that helps you stay low and slow and get right on path. If I jerk it back, ball's not gonna go in the right spot. If it's too fast, too slow. So it really just gets you right in the right um it just gets you in the perfect position from the very beginning and it starts your swing off in a great way so this is my favorite drill so you set two balls up i use about that much in between set up and what you're supposed to do push the ball back and you can do a couple just kind of tests like that at first just get used to the feeling but I will hit actual golf shots um, doing this really bad <laughs> um, I struggle again with my takeaway so I sometimes pick it up and get out around it and I don't always go straight back and through and as you can see there it really just wasn't a good takeaway and you can see from where the ball ended up it just didn't move in the correct position do this for a while until I feel good with my takeaway. So the next drill that I love to do because it helps me so much but hate to do because it is so hard is the stop at the top drill. I've talked about this before, but if you get disconnected in your swing, I don't care how good you are, you're not gonna be able to square it up. And so having really great tempo and the timing of your swing is so vital to hitting good iron shots. And so what you do, go to the top, hold it, and then everything comes down together. 
your hips move too fast, you're not gonna hit it well. If your hands move too fast, you're not gonna hit it well. And so if you can do this, stop at the top, come down and hit solid contact, chances are you're gonna be hitting some really pure iron shots. And so do this drill until you start finding really good contact. I still struggle with this drill. I, it doesn't matter how much I do it, the first couple, it just takes me a while. And so it shows me that I'm just out of sync and things aren't working in the correct order. And so this is the best drill to do. And again, it doesn't matter what your technique is, what skill level you are, these are great drills for anyone and they help you get better because it's tempo and for both of these drills. Tempo, finding a rhythm, and being connected. I get quick on it and so then when I hit a little fat because I got to the top and I rushed it and you probably see the difference between the first and the second one and so this is just a very challenging difficult drill and so don't get too hard on yourself too or too frustrated when you're doing this because it does take a lot of time a lot of practice to get it down perfectly but once you do like I said it's going to help you so much. So after I work through those two drills, which I do every single time I'm in the range and I feel comfortable and confident with both of them, I now go into just my normal swings. I'm just trying to find the center of the face, hit some straight shots, and then after I hit straight shots, I'm going to start working the ball. So I'm going to hit some draws, I'm going to hit some fades, um, just seeing where my swing path is and again, trying to really visualize and hit certain shots that I know I'm going to hit out on the golf course. And I'm going to do this with all of my clubs. So like I said, I'm going to start with my eight iron, then I'm going to go to my six iron, then hybrid, five wood, three wood, driver. Like I said, work through the entire bag. And then once I do that, I'm going to then take the sticks away and go through my pre-shot routine and play nine holes of a pretend golf course. So any golf course that I could think of and that I have played before, so I know the holes really well. And um, like I said, I'm gonna really challenge myself and put what I learned and did on my practice and through the drills to the test when I'm doing uh, fake golf out here. I don't love hitting a ton of range balls like I used to. So I did all of my drills, worked through all of my irons, spent a lot of time hitting a ton of different shots. I uh, just hit a couple with my woods because those have actually been really good. And so now I'm gonna put it to the test. I'm gonna play three holes of pretend <laughs> and see how I'm executing my shots, going through my routine. You wanna put it to the test. And so by that, I mean you go through your entire routine because it feels different because you can get in a rhythm of just stepping up and hitting ball after ball after ball, but when you actually step back, switch clubs, it puts you in that mindset of being on the golf course. And so a lot of people struggle with taking their range game over to the golf course. And so this is a perfect way to practice and get ready for that. So the first hole on Shadow Creek is a par four that dog legs just a bit to the left. There's water, a creek that runs up the left side. There are trees on the right side. I'm gonna hit 
Visual, try to visualize a nice tight little draw. Right is fine, can't miss left. And so my target is between the 100 and the 125. So that's my fairway. I cannot go left of the 100 or it's this fairway in the water. And I can't go right of the 125 because then I'm in the trees in the rough. So then normally I have around like 80 yards and so let's play an 85 yard shot. I'm going to take my uh, shot scope range finder and we talked about this in the video before but this one's really cool because you have the range finder but you also have the um, tracker so you can get all of your analytics and your data. So I'm going to find a target out here that's around 85 yards. So we are going to go at this um, like brown medallion out there. It's around 79 yards. So we're going to then play it to there. I'm going to hit my uh, 54 degree wedge and hit um, not a full swing, but more of a knockdown shot because I want to flight it. Because the way that this green is, you don't want to put a lot of spin on it because it's sloped. And so you don't want to spin off the green. So I hit a really good shot there. Let's say it hits about 10, 15 feet. Um, obviously you can't finish the hole here. So we're just gonna move on to the next hole. The next hole is a difficult drive for me. It's kind of this uphill par four. Um, there's a bit of a ravine, no water, but there's just uh, car path trees on the left side, trees on the right side. Not much trouble, but visually it doesn't set up that well for me. And so I'm really gonna try to hit like a little baby fade on this shot, just more of a controlled uh, swing. So my fairway here, we're gonna switch it up this time. Always pick different targets, different fairways. We're gonna go between the 150 and the 100. You can make it harder on yourself. You can pick targets that are closer to each other or wider, whatever you want to do. I try to challenge myself and make the fairways just a little bit smaller than they would be on the golf course. kind of double cross myself I wanted to hit that nice tight little fade ended up hitting it just a little bit left I was still right on that 150 but let's say that I missed the fairway so my next shot normally have around like 145 into it so we'll play it to the 150 again I'm gonna grab my shot scope and we'll find that you're right So it's 147 yards to the 150. I am going to grab my nine iron. So I'm in Colorado with the altitude. So I'm playing for that compared to um, what I would normally be hitting it. So I hit my nine iron here uh, pretty far. So we'll see how far it goes.
in the wind. Um, I caught it right where I needed to. I probably would have been actually a pretty good shot on the golf course, but I hit that terribly, which then confirms but with my shot scope data that my irons are not where they need to be because I slightly missed that drive and I was fine. And then the iron shot was absolutely horrendous, terrible, disgusting. So what I noticed is that when I go through my pre-shot routine, I don't know what it is. I get maybe a little nervous and I get a little fast and I just don't hit my irons as pure as I do when I'm just, you know, being nice and controlled after my drills. And so that's just something that I need to continue to work on. But now I know and I've been putting it to the test and it's confirmed that I need to, you know, still work, you know, still work on it. This last hole is a long long par four it's downhill that goes straight up the hill it's a very wide fairway really no trouble anywhere uh, so i'm going to find between the 150 and the 125 it is a very wide fairway and so i'm going to again um, make this feel like the golf course Perfect drive exactly where I wanted to hit it. I normally have around 185, 190, so I'm going to hit my five iron. Fun fact, I hate my five iron more than anything in my bag. So I'm going to find a target out here that matches like that 185 shot. There's a 175 that's playing like 179. So um, this should go a little bit farther than um, that 170 uh, flag out there. So we're gonna go right at it. So it's gone really well. Um, I'm very excited about that shot because uh, one, I don't like my five iron. I picked a flag that felt a little uncomfortable for me. Flags on the left side of the range feel great. Flags on the right side, not so great. So this was kind of a weird angle, which I did on purpose to make it feel uncomfortable. I slowed it down, tried to think of my drills and execute it. So you can play as many holes as you want to. I like to do three to nine holes. That way I can really focus in and I don't lose concentration. But I highly recommend that everyone finish their practice session by doing this because as you could see, I was striking it earlier and then when I put a little pressure on myself, I got quick, which is a tendency that I do out on the golf course and voila, I hit a bad iron shot. Um, so do this to feel like what's gonna look like on the golf course, go through your pre-shot routine, pick targets, challenge yourself, and uh, have fun with it too. You're here to get better and to really improve, and it's hard working on things that you're not good at, and I think that's why sometimes we just don't get better. And so you have to practice things that you don't like, which for me is irons, and you'll see massive uh, jumps in your score this way, not that way, the good way. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. And don't forget if you guys want to get a shop scope, I will put the link down below. That way you guys, one, have a range finder. You can also get all your data, which is so important to improving your game. Don't forget to leave a comment down below, like this video and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys next time.